All right, everybody. Uh, I'm here at my shop. I uh, just want to do an update video on the Genesis. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I posted a video of the red one that was hitting the rear that we bought at an auction uh, so we could get the motor out of it to put in this one. Uh, this one here had 82 or 83,000 miles. It had the bad motor. Uh, we bought this one. We were going to part it out and then we decided to go ahead and fix it. Uh, with us having a dealer's license, I have to sell a certain amount of cars every year. And this one here will be one of those cars. Uh, the motor that's in it now, this is the replacement motor. The old motor is sitting over there on the floor. Um, I have this one just about in. Uh, the transmission bolts. Uh, the motor to transmission bolts are in. The motor mount nuts I just put back on. I still have to put the steering gear back up in its place. Uh, you have to loosen it to get to the nuts on the bottom of the motor mounts. Uh, and also attach all the accessories on the side of the motor, steering pump, which you did not have to take off, which I was happy about that because I really didn't want to have to drain these lines. And also the AC compressor, which I also did not have to uh, take off and let the Freon out. So that saves some money on that end. Uh, still have to finish up the wiring uh, i got a couple more plugs to put up and also vacuum lines the fuel line that goes down to your fuel and um finish hooking up the rest of the wires over here uh, it was easier just to undo the battery terminal and this main fuse box unplug it and unbolt it and it just all lays over to the driver's side of the vehicle so it's easier to get everything out um so this is just about ready to go i don't know what was wrong with the old motor the mechanic shop that sold the car said they had a bad motor the only thing i can tell is they pulled the and the uh injectors i'm sorry not injectors they call they pulled the coal packs out they pulled the plugs out uh and like i said in the other video uh if i did i can't remember if i did or not but this motor came out of that car so this is the one that was in front of the manual transmission the v the motor that's in that genesis now came out of the automatic uh genesis and the difference between them is the intake manifolds. So that's why this intake manifold is gone. Uh, this is the one that came off the, the automatic car. And see this little nipple right here? On a manual transmission motor, there is a, uh, this is drilled and tapped for a vacuum port. On an automatic uh, transmission motor, this is not, so this is for an automatic. The one that I took off and put back on the motor is for manual. So automatic does not have a port, manual does have a port. So this is the only difference that I have noticed on these motors. Otherwise you can swap them out. The back of the uh, crank is the same. So you'll have room for your pilot bearing. Uh, but as far as this motor, I don't know what's wrong with it. I will tear into it a little bit more. The, when I pulled the intake off, the valves look fine. Uh, there is something that I've noticed here. The turbo is about seized up. Uh, they did put this block off plate on, which I am not going to do. I'm going to leave it stock. I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, but they did put this block off plate on it. Um, and I'm not really sure the benefits of that. I mean, I could probably look it up. It's probably, I know the blow off valve goes here. The one on there has a vacuum line that comes up and connects to this port here. Uh, but this one, this turbo here is 
pretty much seized up. Like it's extremely hard to turn. Uh, so that might be one of the problems with that motor, the turbo going out, whereas this one here is very free. You can spin it, it's very tight. It's not loose at all. So this turbo here is still good. This is still has the factory uh, part on it, whereas that one back there had that block off plate. And like I said, this vacuum line goes up and connects to this port right here. I still have a few more connectors to hook up. Uh, and also, when I pulled this motor out, I was only expecting to have to swap the motor out. But when I pulled this motor, uh, I will show you guys this. As you can tell, this here is the clutch and the uh, throwout bearing. Uh, but anyway, so I've replaced this because this came in the new clutch kit. But I'll show you guys what was wrong with this. When I pulled this out, it was loose. This is how it was, still bolted to the crank. And this is a dual mass flywheel, which the first time I've ever seen one. And you can see it has a lot of heat scoring on this. So this needed to be replaced anyway. And this was down to the, um, the grooves in the clutch so this was about toast this here is the Dumas flywheel now from what I have read is here is your starter ring gear here's your timing gear for your timing and then this is part of your clutch uh, this is your uh, surface plate I guess but it's to help with um, torque from the motor, from shifting gears and stuff. This will allow you to, it will allow the forces from the motor to not actually go through the transmission and into the drive axle, uh, the rear drive shaft and the rear carrier. It's got spring setups in here that will take a lot of the force out of that hard shifting and torque and everything. Um, but the center of this has actually busted out, so it's not supposed to be loose like this. It is supposed to turn, and when you turn it, you rotate this a little bit more, and it's supposed to spring back, but it's not, it's not springing back like it's supposed to. So, obviously I had to go ahead and get a new clutch kit which unfortunately you cannot just go to O'Reilly's and get. So I had to order it online. And $866 later, we have a new clutch set up in that car. Now obviously when I go to start this thing up, I still have to bleed out the uh, throat baron, or not the throat baron, um, Whatever that thing is, it presses the teeth in on the clutch. I keep wanting to call it a throat baron, but I can't remember what it's called. It's been a long day, but anyway, this thing, you have to bleed this thing out. There's a bleeder on the end right here. You'll press the clutch and just like bleeding your brakes, bleeding the brakes on your car. Uh, that was probably still good, but they gave me a new one, so I just went ahead and put it on and we'll bleed it out. So this one's just about done. I uh, just went and picked up oil and the new oil filter for it. I still have to put the radiator intercooler, all the piping for the turbo system on it, and attach all the accessories, alternator, and everything else. And this one here will be ready to go. But I just wanted to do an update on this. I uh, didn't know if you guys wanted to see one or if you cared about it, but I figured it'd just uh, be another video for you guys to watch. Uh, also, if you guys want to see it, I do have a CJ5 that I bought out of a barn that has been sitting for a while. Uh, if you guys want to see a video on that one, I can show you one. Uh, I guess just let me know in the comments below. Appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next one.